Welcome to this talk on learning to rank with Apache Solar and Bees. Uh, my name is Christine Perschke and I am a software developer at Bloomberg. I joined Bloomberg directly out of university um, almost 13 years ago. It's a great place to work. Um, I've worked with many uh, technologies and uh, projects over the years, from very visible things on literally every user's screen through to sort of more quiet things behind the scenes, but equally as important. These days, I am part of the new search infrastructure team. Our team is uh, based in London mainly, and we own and run the search backend behind the news functionality on the Bloomberg terminal. A few years ago, we started to migrate our search backend from a third-party proprietary solution uh, to open source Apache Solar, and that is how I got involved with Apache Lucene Solar and open source in general. Um, I am a committer for Lucene and Solar, and I'm also on the PMC, and I'm also a member of the Apache Software Foundation. When I don't work and when I don't do open source in my spare time, I do keep bees, that's honeybees, um, you know, the tiny insects you might see in flowers in your garden. Four wings, six legs and several tens of thousands in just one box in the height of summer. So we've talked a little bit about solar and the connection with bees. Where does uh, learning to rank fit into the picture here? So earlier this year in January, in the 6.4 release of solar, the learning to rank plugin was added. The plugin uh, was contributed by a team of uh, Bloomberg engineers and some of them might be hiding in the audience here somewhere. Special shout out to Diego and Michael if you're here. And uh, sometime after the Jira ticket uh, 8542 was created and the team attached the first patch, that's when I was given the opportunity to join that team effort and to lead on integrating uh, fully into the upstream code base. So that was earlier this year, the 6.4 solar. Now the latest version is 6.61. And so what's my goal uh, for today? Uh, my objective is to convince you to start playing around with the Learning to Rank plugin. No previous experience with Solar needed, uh, no previous machine learning experience needed. So this is a just get started kind of tutorial. And all the materials I'm gonna show you, they're all available on uh, GitHub in this URL uh, for you to take home and play around with. What are we going to use? Obviously, we're going to use Solar uh, 6.61, and I'm going to upgrade it to 7 when that comes out very soon. And we need some data, obviously. So what I have done for today is I have chosen a small number of uh, tweets, and we're going to use the Twitter REST APIs to get the data for those tweets into our Solar index. Also uh, publicly available and open source, uh, we're going to use the liblinear and ranklib libraries. Those are machine learning libraries. And again, the URL for the repo at the end there it contains a bunch of wrapper scripts, a demo script you can run, and uh, minimal config for Solar. So literally just all the things you need to get uh, started with the example. I've pruned it down as much as possible. And if there's time at the end, and I think there should be, I will show you a little bit um, um, what you can do once you go home. However, however, before uh, we delve into all these uh, technical details, let's take a moment to remind us what we're actually trying to do here. So many of us have a search engine um, back at home, and or perhaps you are starting to develop a solar search engine, and hopefully you have users, and you probably want to acquire more users, and we want all our users to be happy. Now, um, they should be happy with the search results that they receive from our search engine, and they need to find the content that they're looking for. Now for the demo um, here today, uh, I have made up two imaginary users. Uh, we have Bianca, who's a beekeeper, and she's very interested in bees. And a uh, slightly different interest, uh, her friend Harry, he's a chef, and Harry loves honey. So if we can find any honey re recipes, that would be great. Now, a common problem our users face, though, is that there are just too many search results. And there's a lot of clutter, and it's difficult to find relevant content or find stuff that uh, we're looking for. Now, 
that's of course not a new problem. And there are many ways to try and um, solve this and approach this. Um, one um, solution you could take in solar is that you have your regular results, uh, BM25, DFIDF, whatever, search engine ranks the results. And then you boost your results uh, in some kind of way. So for example, you could boost um, by the recency, you're gonna show the documents uh, that are newer, higher up in the list. Or maybe you're gonna say, okay, uh, anything with a photo, let's give that a boost and show it higher up in the results. And yes, in this case, that would uh, favor the very delicious Bienenstich cake. Now, such a approach, uh, boosting approach on fields or boosting on queries, that works well for many use cases. But uh, you may wish to consider more complex things or just more factors beyond a few fields or simple queries. And that is where learning to rank it could be helpful. So as a definition from Wikipedia, and I've tried to illustrate as well uh, what uh, learning to rank for solar actually means. Essentially, if our users want 10 documents to be returned to them, what we do in solar is uh, we fetch more documents. Say we fetch 100 documents, and then we use machine learning to reorder those documents. So that's the clever bit. We take the 100 documents, we apply our machine learning model to reorder them, and once we've done that, then we take once more the top 10 documents. And maybe I said that too quickly, or maybe there's just a few, many, too many numbers in there. Basically, we fetch more, and then we prune back with the machine learning. Fetch and prune. That's easy, right? So now then, the only thing we need to understand really is um, what the machine learning is about and how we get the machine to learn with solar. And that is what the rest of this talk is about. Now, machine learning needs data. If the machine would speak, it would say, feed me data. And it needs uh, three uh, kinds of data fundamentally. It needs uh, information about the queries that our system is receiving. You know, what kind of searches are users running? When are they running them? You know, query information, query logs, you probably already have those. And we also need, for those queries, information about the searches that we are returning to the users, results for the queries. <coughs> and further on in the pipeline, we need some kind of feedback on the quality of the results to learn from, essentially. Now, in many cases, that means that the user click on it. Um, but you can also have other kinds of uh, ways of capturing relevance or if it's a good quality result, you could use um, human judgments. There's different kind of things, but for the purposes of this demo, we're gonna go with clicks and you've already met our users, uh, Bianca and Harry, they're going to pretend click on our results. <laughs> okay, so I just mentioned that we need to record that the uh, results that we return to our users, and in particular, we need to record so-called features um, of those results because those features are going to be used in the machine learning. Now, Solar makes this very easy. It provides a number of classes um, in the LTR plugin, and as a user, as a search engineer, you simply configure how you want those classes to be used. Um, this is the account list of classes and uh, you can configure them. It's also an um, extendable class, so if you have your own sort of custom features you want to develop, then you can implement extra features. And I will show you an example of those features, each of them. And this is our first feature. So what we have here is a piece of JSON. Every feature is uh, configured as a small piece of JSON. It's got a name obviously. You configure the class uh, of the feature. Now that needs to be the fully qualified uh, class path. That didn't fit on the slide here, so I just put the class name itself. So solar feature. And uh, for this solar feature, we are going to uh, use a query, Q parameter, just like in the regular solar. And we are looking for the term honey in the tweet field. Now, 
Features are domain specific, so we're dealing with bee and honey related content here. So it's a fair assumption that you know the term honey might be sort of related and relevant to quality of results. And we have an example document on the right here. How many miles does a honeybee colony fly to bring you just one pound of honey? So we've got um, two occurrences of the term honey there. And well, I don't know how, how you would exactly, would you include the hashtags as token, but you know, there's a sort of percentage of, I don't know, 15% honey in this tweet. Same document, uh, another feature. Obviously, one document can have several features. This feature is the field length uh, feature. So we are interested in the hashtag field in our search index. Again, domain specific, but you could, um, you know, take the length of another field in your um, search index, you know, long descriptions, title, user reviews, I don't know, uh, the length of the features. And um, hashtags, how many hashtags do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hashtags. That's the field length feature. Another feature here, this uh, is a value feature. So we're looking at the value of a particular field. In this example, I have chosen um, the verified account feature. So I don't know if you can see, uh, no, that's the wrong button. Oops, don't look at that, that's on the next ones. Uh, this button here, if you can see the blue badge there uh, next to the username, so this tweet is from a verified account. You might have other kind of indications in your search index where the documents are coming from, and that may influence the quality of results, maybe. Field value feature. Now, a feature could also have nothing at all to do with your documents. That seems initially a bit strange, maybe. Um, now, what we do here is we have a value feature, and if you see in the middle there, um, there's a parameter or a placeholder configured uh, with a dollar sign and the curly braces from mobile. And um, basically what we do there is we say there's a placeholder called from underscore mobile, and when you run your search request, you can provide uh, so got external feature information, EFI for short, in the query, and you can say, I know this query comes from a mobile device, or indeed, I know it doesn't come from a mobile device. Now, that means you can use the same machine learning model, but you can sort of slightly adjust the results depending on where the queries come from. And the end effect there obviously would be that maybe on a mobile device, you want to have slightly different search results, but you still want to use the same general kind of model. And with the uh, colon a zero at the end there, if this, um, parameter is not supplied in the query, then it will just use the default value, so nothing to worry about there. If you're wondering about the tweet on the right-hand side, uh, no connection there to the uh, value feature as such, um, except, I don't, know, I don't know what the cell phone mobile reception is like up in Alaska, but they do have uh, bumblebees, even in Alaska, so that's a pretty interesting article in the New York Time, Times uh, science section. This is the last example um, feature I have for you. Um, it's really just to illustrate that you can do pretty um, complex uh, things with the features, and it's very much depending on your domain. You need to kind of engineer and find the features that make sense in your space. What we have here is we have another solar query, and this time we've got more parameters. So we have a queue parameter for the query, and we also have a filter query parameter. Now this uh, filter query is on the retweet um, source field in the example. So this means this feature will only score a non-zero value if the document is a retweet. The thing the query does there, it's a function query, just like a regular function query in Solar, and it takes the logarithm of the followers count field. So it's an sort of order of magnitude how many followers um, was this potentially retweeted to. It's kind of, uh, it's gonna give you some kind of number that may make sense in the domain. But the really interesting uh, thing about this example is that the followers account field is actually an, an external file field in Solar, which means that it's uh, stored external uh, to the index and an external file, as the name suggests. 
and you can refresh the values of those fields without re-indexing the documents. So that's a pretty uh, powerful thing, which you might want to, you know, have popularity scores or kind of things outside which change, but you don't want to re-index all your data uh, just to pick up those changed values. So that's the external file field in Solar. So uh, we've seen the uh, feature definitions, they all JSON. And what you do with those uh, JSON um, definitions, you upload the file to um, Solar with a very simple command. It's so simple, I didn't want to put it on the slide. But it is in the repo material, so one command to upload the JSON to Solar, and then it is stored in Zookeeper, so it's, it's the one of upload. And then uh, remember we wanted to log things and use it in the learning, so what we need to then do is ask Solar to calculate those values and give them back to us. And that's called uh, feature extraction. And again, it's very easy. Uh, you simply append the stuff in bold, the FV for feature value in square brackets, uh, append it to your feature list parameter, the feature list parameter you would have already anyway. And the bottom half of the slide, that, that is what the feature values look like when they're extracted. It's basically a long list of feature names and values. Notice here that um, there's a lot of um, features there and you won't necessarily use all of them in the end. But, um, you know, define them to start with. That's what they look like. Okay, so that was the uh, feature information. The other thing I said is we need uh, so-called click signals or some kind of feedback data from the user. The um, uh, example here is just a very, very simple one to, you know, illustrate what kind of information we need. So we need uh, uh, what kind of query it was, uh, what kind of result it was, and if the user clicked on it. A lot of things you can um, do with click streams, uh, lots of talks about that in uh, this conference and other things, other places. Two, two things I want to quickly point out here is that between the first and the second click there, there's a minute that elapsed we may wish to interpret that somehow. Maybe it means that the first result was really good and the user engaged with it before uh, moving on to the next search result. Or maybe a minute in our domain is just actually very atypical and you know we can't really um, interpret anything there. The second point is that the third result there are deliberately let like two weeks elapse there. Now we need a lot of data for machine learning, but equally, you know, Practically, there are limits to how much data you can retain and meaningfully make sense of, so something to consider. Okay, so we have the data, we have the features, and we have the clicks. What we now need to do is we need to build a so-called model. And um, Solar at the moment supports uh, two types of model, a linear model and the trees model. Um, those are the classes, and I will show you an example for both of them. So this is again uh, from the um, example material. What we do here is we train a linear model. And what the wrapper script there does, it combines the uh, clicks data and the features data that we extracted in order to pass it to the liblinear training library. Now, once the two types of data are combined, the, there's an input file which uh, looks uh, something like that. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with this. It's just a very simple example. Uh, it's a bunch of rows uh, with a plus one or minus one at the beginning, meaning it, it's a click or it's not a click. And then it's a representation of the feature values using feature IDs and feature uh, values. So not, not particularly human friendly, but that's what the machine needs. And in the simplest um, form, you just take this data, give it to the learning library, machine learning library, LibLinear. Please, here's some data, please give me some outputs. That's the simplest way. There are many options you can use, but in the simplest way, input, output. And what LibLinear will give you back is three numbers, because we ask for three features to be used here. And the wrapper script then converts those three numbers into JSON, and this is the JSON 
that you upload to Solar to represent the linear model that you have just trained and that you want to use. So what we have here is we have the name for the uh, model, obviously. We have the class uh, of the model. Again, this could be a custom class, but this is just the out-of-the-box linear class. And uh, we have some weights, um, some weights to be used for the features. So according to the training data that I gave to our very small demo example, the number of hashtags are actually positively correlated. So the more hashtags, the higher up in the search result the document should appear. And maybe surprisingly, actually, for the honey content, if there's more honey in the tweet, then the data suggests, the very small data, that actually that's making the document less relevant, maybe calorie conscious, I don't know. So we have the model. Uh, we upload the model to Solar. Again, upload the model in one simple command. And then we are ready to use the model. That's very easy. Uh, it's one uh, parameter extra on your query. That's the RQ, the re-rank query parameter. And you say that you want to use the LTR learning to rank um, query parser, and you want to use the model called MyLinearModel. And this is one of the documents that came back in the search results. Now, the model suggested that hashtags are good, so it does have a hashtag. And what do we think? Is this a relevant result? Is it not? Well, I don't know. Um, it's got bees in it. I'm a beekeeper, so I like it. <laughs> uh, we're at a solar conference, and we even have a sun god there, so, you know, maybe. A hotel next door, it's a Luxor, Egyptian theme there, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this might be a nice document, but it's very important that, uh, you know, with any machine learning you uh, use, any models you train, or indeed any other kind of boosting adjustments to relevance you make to your system is you need to evaluate your results, right? Metrics, A-B testing, whatever, you need to evaluate stuff before you use it for real. And in that evaluation, you might find that maybe for your particular use case, a linear model actually doesn't quite work or it doesn't capture enough uh, details. And if the linear model isn't quite the thing, you might want to try the trees model. That's the other model Solar supports. Now, this is again the um, um, Python command uh, script in the example to train a trees model. We say, please train a trees model. Please uh, go and use these features. And there's some parameters at the end there. So on the surface, it looks like, okay, this is going to be pretty easy. We're going to train another model and, you know, <laughs> should work. But I think especially with the trees model, it's actually not that easy. Um, the reference script here uses the RankLib uh, machine learning library, and that supports uh, many different algorithms. There's many different parameters. And realistically, to get good results, you're going to need some machine learning uh, expertise, some data science uh, people on your team, on your project, to, to get good results. Because um, with everything, as we know, rubbish in, rubbish out, if you don't really know what you're doing and you're just sort of playing around with stuff, you know, you want some proper expertise there. That's the question marks in the title. Now, I am not a machine learning person. And when I trained this model here, this is a real model based on the demo data and the demo clicks, so it's a real model. My criteria for this model was, does it fit on the slide? And I don't know if you can see it at the back, but it certainly does uh, fit on the slide. So does it fit on the slide, and can I explain it to you? Because, you know, if you see it and it's like, Ugh. so can I explain it to you? And let me try to explain it. Um, so the uh, multiple additive trees model is a multiple trees, as the name suggests. And what we do is we weigh all of the trees and then we add them up. In this case, because the slide is very short, um, we can only fit one tree. Reasonable size tree, one tree. The tree at the root uh, takes uh, one particular feature. This is the contains hashtag feature. And it will look at the value of that feature and then compare the value of the feature against the threshold, which is the second or the fourth line, actually, the fourth line there. It will compare the value of the feature against the threshold. And then it will do one of two things. We're going to go left 
or we're going to go right on the tree. So we're going to branch. It's a tree. We're going to branch. So if we assume that the document didn't contain any hashtags, that means we're at or below the threshold, which is zero, then we are going to turn left. Now, on the left branch there, just another tree. Now, this tree looks at the from desktop feature. Um, this was the one that came with the query. And just like the from mobile, so it's, it's an external file feature query. Not external file feature, external feature information. <laughs> and um, we're going to say once more again, uh, compare against the threshold and turn left or turn right. So if we assume for the example here that the query did come from a desktop, so we are going to turn right here. And then there's one more tree, a third tree here. And this time we're going to look at the verified account feature. And once more, we're going to turn left or we're going to turn right. And I have a choice here. I'm going to turn left back to the middle here. So as you can see, we're going to evaluate all those trees, all those features. And so that's going to do this little dance in the engine. And at the end, it's going to reach a leaf node in the tree. And that is um, going to end at one of the leaves. And that's going to be 1.25. 1.66, 1.0, or 1.75 for that part of the document in the tree. Then we weigh that with a point 0.1 here and add it up with all the other trees. And that's how we have a new score for our document. Now, that's, that's relatively complicated, but I hope what you can also see is that it's a very powerful way to express stuff. And don't worry, you don't have to write these kind of trees. You give your click data, you give your features data, do something like Ranklip, and Ranklip will come up with these clever trees. So it's very powerful what you can do there. And this is the uh, example the model came back. If we say it's a query from a mobile device, now again, hashtags seem to be a thing. So this is actually today's Friday as well. So it's a Friday hashtag. And again, I don't know if this is a good result uh, for our particular users or if something else would have been more suitable. It's important to evaluate the models that you train before you use them. And it's not just important to evaluate the models that you're training. There's lots of different honeys. And no two models are the same. No two honeys are the same. So I would encourage you as a beekeeper to also evaluate the honeys that you put on your toast and see if you can try something new. <laughs> which uh, brings us to the last uh, slide of the talk. Um, what I hope to have shown you is that uh, learning to rank uh, with Apache Soda is it's very easy to get started, but it is a journey. It's an adventure. And for your domain, it's, it's your journey. If you do go traveling, please don't send postcards. But we would love to hear from you on the, on the mailing list on Jira if you find bugs, if you have ideas for new features. Or indeed, uh, come back to Revolution here next year and give us a talk and tell us about how you are using the Learning to Rank plugin. And that's it. Thank you very much. Um, now, I don't know how much time do we have left. Five, ten minutes? Seven minutes, excellent, okay. Um, so what I would like to do is, uh, with those seven, seven minutes, take about two or three minutes to show you um, two things uh, from the um, demo material on how you can use it. Um, I've got it all prepared here. Okay, this is a bee I saw near my hotel this morning. Um, now the material, as I said, it's all on uh, GitHub, so let me increase the font size. So public repo, you can go and clone it. Um, it's got the configs. Um, it's got um, the feature examples I showed you, um, as well as some more. Um, it's basically all using a bunch of Python wrapper scripts. And there's a demo script, which you can run. And it will literally run the demo. I don't want to spend like five minutes here to run the demo for you. You can do that uh, on your own at home. And then I hope uh, some of you will uh, go and adapt the demo. Um, to explore what learning to rank can do. Now, two things I want to show you here. 
Uh, one is that you can use uh, Solar's XLT uh, response writer to transform the results. And if you do that, then you can see the results of your example here in, in the browser. So this is embedded tweets. And at the moment, we just have 12 documents here. So it's a very small example, um, 12 documents. And what you can do is you can add new things to it. So this is uh, how you can add documents of your own. And we are going to try and do that here as a live demo. Now, can you see that? No. Uh, OK, is that any better? OK, maybe just about. Um, so this is a wrapper script. It can do a bunch of things. What we want to do here is we want to index tweets by query, which is this. and. It's a wrapper around the uh, Twitter uh, APIs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just add some tweets from Lucene Solar Revolution. And there it does the thing. And if we go back to refresh the results here, now we have uh, 15 extra documents. That the, that's the default uh, returned by the APIs. Now, if we instead look for, need a quote here, um, Lucene Solar Rev, and say we want more documents, uh, I think you can get up to 100 in one API call. So it's indexing into our mini example here. And if I go back, reload, uh, so we've got more than 100 documents here. So, so you can take the example and, and play around and put do documents of your choice. It doesn't have to be bees, it doesn't have to be honey. But honey is very good, says the beekeeper. <laughs> and that's it. Um, to go back to one last slide here, I've got the, um, got the URL of the repo here. Uh, very occasionally I do tweet about bees, but only very occasionally. Um, take out Bloomberg.com if you want to read about stuff we're doing at Bloomberg. And I think, yes, we are hiring, but we're also tweeting. If so, if you just would like to follow us, uh, please do. And so I think we've got three minutes uh, for questions. So. Yes, yes, please. How can it be like look at the similarities between the query Sorry, can you repeat that? What kind of features allow you to look at the similarities between the query in a document or the query in the same field in a document? All the features you've talked about with documents but I know it does have the capability to compare, like, okay, this matched in this field with this similarity. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna... So all, all the features you showed were like attributes of a document. Okay, but okay. I know you can have an attribute that's a combination of the similarity between a query and a document. So the dynamic attribute? Like a coastline similarity or something like that. How does, how does that work? Okay, I'm not entirely sure I answered the question, but I'm gonna try and answer it what I think you're asking is, uh, so, so the, uh, the solar feature is that it runs a query. So that is not just a yes or no, it, you do get the score with that. So you, you do get how well the document was similar to the query. Is that what you're asking? But I thought you had the, base, the capability of basically new features that were like, okay, what is the cosine, the cosine similarity between this field and this query? Isn't you talking about, but can we have a feature like title match query, query right. match query? Yeah, that's a very good you can use LTI dot solar feature and mention title match query. So field field code and title we can add. Yeah, your queries are yeah, the the queries are on a particular field, so, so but as a feature to the algorithm as opposed to just using the solar feature. I just wanted to um. Uh, okay, I think I think I think maybe maybe we can take that offline. Yeah, um, sure. And if it, if it doesn't support it yet, um, it's um, it's an extensible stuff. So if it's a feature which doesn't exist yet, then well, you know, you it'd be great to add new stuff. I think you mean a solar feature, but but yeah, if it, if it doesn't exist yet, then maybe it could be added. So okay. I'm gonna come for that. Thank you. 
Any other questions? There's a bright light there. Uh, yep. Yeah. As a non solo user, how much of this is available directly in Lucene? Um, as a non solo user, how much of this is available directly in Lucene? Uh, this is a solar plugin at present. Um, I think that there have been some thoughts about um, refactoring some of it and, and having it on the Lucene level, but no, no uh, concrete uh, plans as yet. Um, I don't know if you're using Lucene directly or if you post you're using the other non-solar search engine. Um, Elasticsearch also has a, a learning to rank plugin, but I don't know much about it. I just know it exists. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Finding uh, the right set of features and uh, uh, training the model accuracy. We like trying it out. Uh, we are putting it in our data side, but we like kind of, kind of struggling with finding the right set of features. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the. Yeah, so, so the question is, any recommendations on um, finding features and, and training a model? And um, yeah, that's the hard bit. <laughs> um, so, so this is, uh, sort of makes it easy uh, in terms of the plumbing and stuff so that you can, you know, um, configure stuff and get the values out and use the model. But yeah, the, the thing that's domain specific, um, that, that, that's, um, that's the difficult bit. Uh, but I would encourage you to um, um, reach out on the, on the user list. Uh, I'm sure many people have uh, sort of s similar kind of questions and um, sharing experiences and stuff, so um, definitely do get in touch. Uh, and uh, one more small question. Are there any like, performance uh, considerations that we need to uh, take into account in uh, figuring out how many number of features? Uh, yeah, yeah, so the question is, uh, uh, what about performance considerations? Mm -hmm. And yes, absolutely, that, that falls under the um, evaluation part of things. So it's no good if the model comes up with the perfect results and it takes a very long time to do that. So you, you will need to you know, e evaluate uh, how, how, how things are going. So the more features you use, uh, you know, the more feature values you need to extract. If it's a more complicated model, then that's gonna take longer to evaluate. So yeah, that, 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 that comes into the evaluation part, trading off the performance you know, cost against the better quality you get. So definitely that's, uh, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, um, thank you very much.